Hello, this is Horam Nasir and you are watching Optometry with Horam. And this lecture, this video is the extension of the last video. We were learning about uh, the diabetic retinopathy and we have discussed in detail about the last stage uh, of the diabetic retinopathy which was the pre-proliferative stage of the diabetic retinopathy. And in this video, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the proliferative stage, right? So before learning about the proliferative stage, you must have to keep it in mind that in diabetic retinopathy, the proliferative mean the neovascularization. And what is neovascularization? Actually, neovascularization is actually the formation of the new blood vessels. It's NEW, new blood vessels, right? And the process of being the new blood vessels is called neovascularization, NEO, neovascularization, right? So, this is optic disc, this is macula right and these are blood vessels the arteries we will consider it as capillary so for example the capillary is ruptured or injured from here this is microaneurysms we have discussed about the microaneurysms in details so this is microaneurysms and all the essential nutrients like uh, the platelets for example and uh, you know the white blood cells the red blood cells, the plasma, all the essential nutrients are released over here, are secreted over here, or you can say wasted over here at this point, right? Because the blood vessel is injured from here. And this is the lipid and proteins are released over here. And the dead bodies of the lipids, or you can say the lipoprotein, and the macrophages, which are actually the uh, white blood cells, a form of white blood cells, are deposits over here. So, this is called the hard exudates. We have discussed many times regarding the hard and the soft exudates. So, in short, the capillary is ruptured over here. This is microaneurysms, the dilation of the blood vessels, right? And due to leakage of the essential nutrients like, like lipoprotein, the hard exudates are formed. So, every essential nutrients are secreted over here and oxygen as well. So, oxygen also is wasted over here at this point so this oxygen and these essential nutrients were taking to this specific point to this specific point i circled over here so actually this point is deprived from the essential nutrients and oxygen as well so this specific point which i circled will be an hypoxic hypoxic patch of the fundus right because every essential nutrients are released over here are secreted over here or wasted over here and oxygen is not transferred here essential nutrients are not transferred here so this specific patch i circled in green marker this is called a hypoxic patch and now this hypoxic patch when this hypoxic patch will die due to lack of oxygen due to deficiency of oxygen this is called the soft exudates but we are not going to learn about the soft exudates. We are going to learn about the formation of the new vessels. That what is the pathophysiology of the formation of the new blood vessels. How these new blood vessels are formed. Right. So because before dying, before formation of the soft exudates, this hypoxic patch, this patch with the deficiency of oxygen will cry for the food, will cry for the oxygen. Right. So as this hypoxic patch is crying his friend is there and the name of his friend is vagif the vagif is actually a silly friend so first of all we will discuss about that what is the vagif v e g f vagif means vagif stands for the vascular endothelial growth factor and what is the function of the vagif or what is the location of the VEGF in uh, a human body? Remember that the vascular endothelial growth factor is actually work as a uh, angiogenesis factor. It forms new blood vessels everywhere in the body. And where it comes from, where this vascular endothelial growth factor will come from, it will come from whenever in the body there is a deficiency of oxygen. If there is deficiency of oxygen, for example, this is an example. For example, my hand is deficient of oxygen. Then the formation of the VEGF will work over here. And what is the function of the VEGF? 
vascular endothelial growth factor the function is that it will produce new blood vessels and it will uh, compensate it will overcome the deficiency of the oxygen in my hand this is an example right and uh, it, it will present all over the body almost everywhere in the body like it present in the lungs it is present in the endocrine system right and if there is deficiency of oxygen if there is a hypoxic pack, patch in my endocrine system if there is hypoxic patch in my lungs in my respiratory system the vascular endothelial growth factor will act on that specific area and it will compensate it will overcome the deficiency of the oxygen at that specific point where there is deficiency of the oxygen right so that is the function of the vascular endothelial growth factor and there is a disadvantage of the vascular endothelial growth factor is there as well and what is the disadvantage the disadvantage is uh, the vascular endothelial growth factor can cause can stimulate the cancerous cells right because the cancerous cells is actually the adding up of the cells right this is cancer and the vascular endothelial growth factor will help this phenomena of the formation of the cancerous cells right so this is vascular endothelial growth factor let's come to the point again so this is the specific point where oxygen is deficient right so this is a hypoxic patch so because this is a hypoxic patch the vascular endothelial growth factor will come and it will try to overcome it will try to compensate the supply of the oxygen right it will come for the help right so vascular endothelial, endothelial growth factor will surround this hypoxic patch like this it will surround the hypoxic patch for the sake of help but so this is this hypoxic patch the patch with the deficiency of oxygen will surrounded by the vascular endothelial growth factor and the vascular endothelial growth factor is there to help right but actually this is trying to help and it will make so many blood vessels so many new blood vessels surrounding the hypoxic patch right but the problem with the vascular endothelial growth factor is it always produce leaky blood vessels the fenestrated blood vessels right so all these blood vessels are leaky are fenestrated so because as you know very well that the retina is a transparent structure like the cornea like the crystalline lens right only one layer of the retina is colorful is pigmented which is the pigmented retina pigmentary layer of the retina right and rest of the nine layers are transparent so suppose if the blood vessels are leaky inside the fundus inside the retina so this is very harmful for the retina right so this hypoxic patch is surrounded by the new vessels and these new vessels are, are leaky blood vessels so the blood will come out of these new blood vessels and all this hypoxic patch will surrounded by the blood and the blood is strongly contraindicated is strongly not allowed in the retinal tissues but due to this friend due to this silly friend vascular endothelial growth factor the whole retina will accumulate the blood vessels whole retina will ac accumulated by the blood right so this is very toxic for the retina this is not good for the survival of the retina right so the formation of these leaky blood vessels the formation of these fenestrated blood vessels is called this process is called neovascularization so this neovascularization is actually the cardinal sign the hallmark of the proliferative diabetic retinopathy if i say that why proliferative diabetic retinopathy is called proliferative diabetic retinopathy due to this process due to neovascularization proliferative in diabetic retinopathy means the neovascularization and now we will discuss about the rest of the uh, uh, you can say abnormal changes due to this neovascularization so rest of the you can say the abnormal signs or abnormal changes inside the fundus due to neovascularization is first of all there is vitreous hemorrhages or you can say first it will cause uh, the vitreous detachment right as you know very well the whole retina is full of blood right now due to new vessels due to vascular endothelial growth factor so there is uh, so the whole retina the whole fundus is full of blood so that blood will go between the retina and the vitreous the space between the retina and the 
vitreous the vitro vitreous retinal space you can say so this will cause the vitreous detachment you know very well that the sensory retina is strongly attached strongly ad adherent with the vitreous right so due to the leakage of the blood that blood will flow between the retina the sensory retina actually and the vitreous right so when this liquid when this blood will come between the sensory retina and the vitreous it will go separated right so that is called the vitreous detachment from the sensory retina so another abnormal sign is vitreous hemorrhages as you know very well that the whole retina is full of blood that blood will flow from the vitreous retinal space inside the vitreous and it will cause the vitreous hemorrhages right and if this new vascularization is at the level of disc at the level of optic nerve head so that is called the nvd and v d the new vascularization at disc again if the new vascularization is there at the level of optic nerve head or optic disc that new vascularization is called the nvd new vascularization at disc right and if this new vascularization is at the level of uh, you can say the temporal arcade or elsewhere inside the retina for example the new vascularization is not at the site of and not at the location of the disc or the optic nerve head it is somewhere else in inside the retina right specifically inside the temporal arcade in this area in the peripheral area of the retina so that new vas new vascularization is called nve new vascularization elsewhere it is called new vascularization elsewhere and the next term is nvi so as you know very well that the flow of the blood is inter interconnected right so if in diabetic retinopathy if the new vascularization starts inside the retinal tissues it will affect also the ciliary body it, it will affect also the iris and if this new vascular new vascularization inside the retina affect the blood vessels inside the iris the anterior part of the eye the colorful structure iris and if there is new vascularization at the level of iris it is called nvi right nvi mean new vascularization at iris right and this nvi also called rubiosus aridus right it's rubiosus aridus you can see the spellings as well so it is called if the new vascularization is at the level of nvi or at the level of iris that is called nvi and it is also called rubiotic or rubiosus aridus right so now it can also called the glaucoma how you can say if there is a blood there is a new vascularization inside the iris so the red blood cells are in excess inside the iris right so these blood vessels will go from the iris through the pupil inside the anterior chamber and it will block the trabecular meshwork right and when the trabecular meshwork will block it can cause the glaucoma and that specific glaucoma is called rubiotic glaucoma right so this is some abnormal changes some abnormal signs uh, in the proliferative stage of the diabetic retinopathy so these are some abnormal signs uh, abnormal changes uh, in the proliferative stage of the diabetic retinopathy and in the very next videos we will discuss about uh, the different remaining stages of the diabetic retinopathy like the burnt out stage the advanced stage of the diabetic retinopathy till then see you